Good afternoon, I'm Abe. And I'm Frank. And today, we're adumbrating Chapter 6, The Duel for North America, in Kennedy, Cohen, and Bailey's The American Pageant Textbook. Abe, take it away. Gladly. So, like England and Holland, France was also a latecomer in the race for the colonies. In the 1500s, it was convulsed with foreign wars and domestic strife, including the conflict between the French Huguenots and the Roman Catholics. French Huguenots were basically another term for French Calvinists. In 1598, however, the Edict of Nantes was issued, and that allowed limited toleration to the French Huguenots, so religious wars were thereafter ceased. Louis XIV, the Sun King, became king in France, and, and he took an interest in overseas colonies, so we have the beginnings of French colonization. So 1608, the French established Quebec, which overlooks the St. Lawrence River. It's in that it's in the same area. Samuel de Champlain was known as father of New France because he entered into friendly relations with the neighboring Huron Indians in the, of course, the Quebec colony, and he helped them defeat the Iroquois. The Iroquois, because of this, did hamper French effort, efforts into the Ohio Valley later on, and they allied with the British. So unlike the English colonists, though, French colonists didn't immigrate to North America in hordes. In France, the peasants were too poor, and therefore they had little economic motive to move, and the Huguenots were not allowed to leave and settle in the New World. They were prohibited. Now, uh, Frank, could you tell me, why did the French take such an interest in Canada? Well, they obviously wanted territory to counter that gained by the Spanish and by the English. And Canada did have one very valuable resource, and that was beaver fur. It was fashionable to wear, it was nice and warm, and therefore scores, scores of hunters went into the woods to look for it. And these hunters were known as coriaux de bois, or runners of the woods. And their job mainly was to hunt and trap beaver to acquire the fur. The other type of ex French explorer was known as voyageois, mm. and these were known as voyageois because they would paddle up and down the streams, voyagers, on the, French, uh, on the French rivers. These also communicated with the Huron Indians, and they tried to trap beaver so much so that beaver went almost extinct within Canada. French Catholic missionaries, such as the Jesuits, also zealously tried to convert Indians to, ca uh, Catholic, to Catholicism. To thwart English settlement from pushing into the Ohio River Valley, Antoine Cadillac founded Detroit, or Auto Town, in 1701. Now, moving forward, moving back eight, uh, 20 years, we see Robert de la Salle, who we learned about earlier, uh, claims the Gulf of Mexico area, uh -huh. Louisiana, for his King Louis, thus trying to stop Spanish expansion into French territory. The fertile Illinois colony, where the French established forts and trading posts um, in Casconia, Cahokia, and Vincennes, became the garden of France's North American colonies, exporting thousands of tons of grain and wheat to France every single year. So, Abe, in resolving their differences, did England and France ever go to war over the colonies? Yes, they did. So we had King William's War and Queen Anne's War. So basically, the English colonists fought the French Corrales de Bois and their Indian allies. And neither side, though, considered America important enough to waste their real troops on. So it was basically just primitive guerrilla warfare. Militias. Yes. Um, the French-inspired Indians, however, did ravage many British villages, such as New York and Deerfield. The British colonists were primarily unsuccessful in capturing Quebec and Montreal. They were outright unsuccessful. And, uh, but they did succeed in, in capturing Port Royal. That was their one victory. The peace deal in 1713 in Utrecht gave Acadia, which is now Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, Hudson Bay, and the Hudson Bay Territory to England, which pinched the French settlements near the St. Lawrence River and also gave Britain limited trading rights with Spanish America. However, there developed friction over the, the smuggling and the trading between the English and the Spanish. So we had the War of Jenkins' Ear. That started when an English captain named J Jenkins had his ear cut off by a Spanish commander and who had essentially sneered at him to go home crying. So they were insulted. The war was confined to the Caribbean and the Georgia area and it soon merged with the War of Austrian Succession and came to be known as King George's War in America. France allied itself with Spain and, but English troops captured, nevertheless, the impregnable fortress of Fort Louisburg on the Cape Breton Island. Peace terms of the war gave Louisburg, which had been captured by the British, uh, back to France. And this outraged the colonists because the colonists feared the, feared the fort. It was basically known as that cocked pistol at the heart of America's. 
Now, uh, Frank, could you tell me, uh, what did George Washington do in his war with France? Uh, George Washington. This is where he starts to come into his own, in effect of the re ridding the colonies of British rule, because this is where he has his first military exposure. Let's go back a bit. Let's remember that the Ohio River Valley has become this battleground among the Spanish, the British, and the French, because it's a lush, fertile, it's very good land for farming, very good resources. So in 1754, the governor of Virginia sent 21-year-old George Washington to the Ohio, uh, Ohio River Valley as the lieutenant colonel in command of about 150 Virginia Minutemen, or the local militia. So he encountered French troops near Fort Dusquens, and within 40 minutes of encountering them, he opened fire, killing the French leader. Now, the French clearly wouldn't stand for that, and they retaliated, and Washington was actually captured, although eventually released. The French fought Indian style, which is why they won basically guerrilla tactics, hiding behind trees. Instead of just marching lockstep towards the enemy, they would use guerrilla tactics, hiding, ducking for cover, then firing, and they, that was what caused them to win. So in response, the British troops seized um, Acadians, and they forced mm -hmm. the Acadians living in Nova Scotia to leave because they were worried that the French Acadians living there would rise up against the British control, and they forced the Acadians to go to other French colonial holdings, such as New Orleans. So, Abe, did the simmering rivalry between England and France eventually result in some larger war? Of course it did. So uh, basically, the fourth of these world wars that we were talking about between empires started in America, which was unlike the first three. The French and Indian War, also known as the Seven Years' War, began with Washington's battle with the French in the Ohio Valley. It was England and Prussia versus France, Spain, Austria, and Russia. In Germany, Prussia, uh, Frederick the Great won his title of great by repelling the French, Austrian, and Russian armies even though he was badly outnumbered, usually a three to one ratio. The British were unable to send troops to aid Fred, good old Fred, so they subsidized, subsidized him with gold. Many of the Americans sought, wanted the, uh, the American colonies as a whole to unite together for strength lay, of course, in their numbers. The Americans were previously known for their astonishing lack of unity. So in 1754, seven of the 13 colonies met in this Congress known as the Albany Congress in Albany, New York. Um, the immediate purpose of the conference was to keep, make sure that the Iroquois would remain loyal to the British during the war. But however, the longer range purpose was and that they wanted to achieve this greater colonial unity that we were just talking about to bolster the common defense against France. Thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys next time in part two. Part two.